Hello everyone and welcome to our new garden. We finally moved, I still can't believe it, but we've been here for about seven months now. So I thought it was about time that I gave you a tour of the new garden and I'll also share our plans with you as well. So let's head on down to the orchard and start. Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to the Old Orchard Garden. Now, I think first things first, I should probably do a little bit of an introduction because I know it might be slightly confusing for those who have followed me previously because I used to be known as Lavender and Leeks, but now it's the Old Orchard Garden. Um, and the whole reason behind that is because everything's changed. We've changed address, <laughs> which means that I had to say goodbye to the old allotment and goodbye to the little purple potting shed, which um, I was really, really sad about. But we're in a new house. We finally moved. It took two years, but we finally moved. Um, so yeah, we're in a new house. We've got a new garden. So I thought that we should have a new name uh, to suit the new garden. But don't worry, I'm the same. I'm still Katie. Everything's still the same. Um, I just sort of needed a new, a sort of a fresh start, so to speak. I think I was lacking a little bit of confidence um, on the blog side and the video side. So I think a change of name is good. And like I said, it also links to the new location, um, which I will tell you all about in a second. <laughs> um, but for all the new people who have started following me and um, started watching these videos then my name's Katie um, I am currently 33 years old and I love gardening um, so much that we actually based our business around it um, and I run a business with my dad it's called Orchard Garden Antiques now because obviously that used to be called Lavender Leaks as well um, but yeah it's Orchard Garden Antiques which suits the business a lot more because obviously we sell vintage gardenalia and homeware and my dad also makes metalwork for the garden as well um so yeah that's what i do for work when i'm not working i'm usually in the garden um, and when i'm not in the garden i am probably doing something craft related like i like knitting i like sewing cross stitching um yeah anything crafty and I'm there <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those people who can't sit still like I have to be doing something um so yeah I do like crafting I like gardening um and when I'm not doing any of those then I'll probably be out walking my dog Teddy who is a Jack Russell Terrier he's going to be three this year um he's playing in the garden at the moment although he should be sleeping because we went on a really long walk this morning and I'm knackered and he should be knackered but he's not because he's a Jack Russell and he's just got endless energy um he's yeah he's quite intense <laughs> he's quite nervous of people as well so I'm trying to do a bit of training with him too um but yeah that's me I think I've probably covered all you need to know um so let's get on with the new location uh, so yeah we moved here in the end of summer 2022 so we moved from Hampshire where we had the allotment and our old house to the Welsh border so quite quite far away um, but yeah we moved to a place where there is one acre of garden I think the main reason why my dad wanted this place was because of the big workshop it has a huge workshop um, which we've been trying to get ready for sort of opening up for business um, which is why we haven't been in the garden much and probably why I have taken this long to actually film a video <laughs> um, but yeah it's got a big workshop um, it's got quite a small house so they're going to extend it but yeah it's got an acre of garden which is amazing like the dreams are just crazy at the moment um, I mean it's not a lot but it's enough it's enough to have a nice vegetable garden 
a little bit of an orchard, um, a little bit of lawn grass uh, for the dogs to run around in. And of course, we've got the business right outside our back door as well. So yeah, yeah, lots, lots happening <laughs> at the moment. Um, we were told that many, many years ago used to be um, an old orchard garden, hence the new name. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, when we moved here, there was only about four or five apple trees remaining. Quite a few of those were beyond saving. Um, they were sort of like in the hedge line, in our hedge line, you know, a bit crooked and, and yeah, they just, they weren't the best. Um, so we sort of got rid of them and we also had to cut a really nice one down, which was such a shame because it was, it was really nice, but it was gonna be like right in the way of our new kitchen garden area. So we made the, the really sad decision to get rid of that apple tree. Um, but what we are doing is we have a new little orchard area, which is where I'm sat in now. We planted some more apple trees. Um, and yeah, we're hoping to have just a miniature orchard, um, which will be nice. I'll talk about that a little bit more later on um, when I show you the plans, because then you can get a sort of idea where everything is. But basically we're going to have the orchard area, the kitchen garden area. There's going to be like a polytunnel and a fruit cage little area. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, the rest will sort of just be lawned with some flowers and maybe like a little summer house area with a fire pit and a pizza oven maybe. Um, but yeah, we're, tr we're trying to use sort of every inch of the garden um, as we possibly can. But um, basically when we got here, I say there was already a vegetable garden. It wasn't being used, um, but you could tell where it was. And um, there was sort of like a hedge line running along, sort of keeping it separate from the rest of the garden. Um, but we decided that that was a little bit too small for us. So we sort of doubled the size of that. We've taken away the hedge. Um, we're gonna put in more hedging um, but again you'll see that a little bit better on the plan rather than me sort of waffling on and trying to get you imagining it <laughs> it will be easier to see it on the plan because like usual I've gone a bit mad on the plan front I've drawn pretty plan and then I've drawn like um, a more to scale plan on graph paper and there's lots of other things to show you as well um, like the potting shed plan, which I'm very excited about. I do love, well, I loved my little purple potting shed, so it'd be nice to have another little shed where I can just sit and drink tea um, and look at the weeds, which I should be weeding, but tea is life. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd, I mean, I don't think there's much else to tell you about the new place, except from that we're extremely happy. The village is amazing. It's a lovely little village. Um, there's a really nice church um, sort of at the back of our property there, which is really nice. I like seeing, I like seeing that in the background. Um, but yeah, everyone's been lovely. The community's really nice. We've made some really nice friends. Um, and yeah, the dogs love it because, you know, as soon as you go out the door, you're just in the countryside and there's just so many walks to go on. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it for... Um, for the little introduction i probably waffled a bit too much i do warn you i do do that quite a lot um what i will probably do is just show you a few little clips of what the garden looked like when we first got here um and then i will change the camera around and we can do a little view of the plans and i can talk through them a little bit better because like i said it's easier to see them when i'm talking about them um, than trying to picture it in your head because yeah I mean we're trying to still make sense of the plans they've changed about three times <laughs> and no doubt that they will change again over the next year I'm sure um, but yeah really really excited about it and I'm excited to show you as well because I know quite a lot of people have been desperate to see the plans and to see a new video um, and yeah let's have a better look at them so these are the official plans of the new garden. I've only drawn the sort of edible working area of the garden. There's obviously like a lawned area here. There's gonna be a little summer house and fire pit here. Uh, the workshop is like over here and the house is over here. 
somewhere. Um, so yeah, I've just drawn out the working part of the garden. This is what I call the pretty plan. <laughs> I don't know why, but every single time I have to do a plan for the allotment or the garden, I do a pretty one. This isn't to scale, but I think I just like getting the colouring pencils out and just making it look nice. <laughs> also, it's quite a nice way of actually seeing what it's going to look like in the future. Hopefully, fingers crossed it looks like this anyway. Because yeah, it's lovely. I'm really excited about it. Um, but this one is the sort of to scale one, the proper one, the more professional one, let's say. Um, it's always good to do a drawing to scale, um, especially when you get a new garden as well, because you can just you know, properly plan where everything's going to the centimetre. Um, and we put all the rows of each vegetable that we're going to grow in there just so we know what's going to fit in, what we can actually grow, um, and also like how many potatoes we need to buy, for instance. So yeah, that's the to scale one, the professional one. Um, but I'm going to go by this one, I think, just because it's a lot better on the eye um, and you can actually see, you know, what's where and yeah, you can see our dreams for the future. <laughs> um, where shall I start talking through? I think we'll actually start with the orchard. Now, this is quite a small space. It's only got eight trees in and we have actually started work on this area we went to the garden center i think it was back in november oh was it november yeah i think it was november or beginning of december anyway we bought lots of bare root trees um so i will go through the varieties with you which i have in my book uh, there are already three trees in the orchard there's an unknown apple a brownie apple and then a plum which we think is a victoria so the trees that we added we've added four more apples we've got uh, katie which i chose this actually comes across a little bit vain actually doesn't it have an uh, apple with the same name as you <laughs> but they are really delicious apples um we've also got ellison's orange discovery and a cider apple called Ellis Bitter. Um, my dad actually made some cider from the apples which we harvested last year. Um, it's not ready to drink yet, but yeah, he, he's um, got all the gear to make the cider. So he wanted a cider apple to mix with, um, you know, some of the other apples to make his own cider and apple juice, of course. We've also got a pear, Concord, um, and there are two damsons, Merryweather damsons, which I planted in the edible hedge, which I will talk about in a second. Um, but yeah, there's four, no, not four, sorry. There's eight trees, fruit trees. Um, and then we're going to sow loads of wildflower seed all over the orchard. And the plan is to sort of mow a pathway through it, um, I absolutely love it. Like, I've got loads of orchard pictures pinned on my Pinterest um, of, you know, long grass or wildflowers with these lovely little pathways moaning. So that's the plan. We've got a little pet cemetery down in the corner with our two past dogs buried there. Their ashes are buried there. So we're going to have some flowers around there as well. There's also going to be chickens. I do already have the coop. The coop was purchased last year. I painted it, put it together and everything. Haven't got the chickens yet because of the avian flu. Um, I, was, I was hoping that it was sort of going to, you know, blow over. Um, but I don't think it will. So I think I'm just going to have to go for it and get some chickens and just create a sort of run for the chickens. Um, but yeah, they're going to go down here. Probably going to have about 10 or 12 chickens. Um, and yeah. They're all going to have Harry Potter names, so I do warn you. <laughs> I am obsessed with Harry Potter, so that's the idea there. And then there's also two beehives here, which don't have any bees in them at the moment. Um, but we got them secondhand with all the gear. The idea is to go on a beekeeping course first um, to learn all about it before I get any bees. Um, but yeah, they're going to live there anyway. 
And then what we've done is we've planted an edible hedge all the way around here. Now, there's fields over here which have sheep in, which when we first arrived here, Teddy used to bark at quite a lot. He's not so bad now. I think he's just got used to them and it's fine. But we just thought it would be quite nice to create a sort of barrier or like, you know, a bit of privacy as well. And we thought, why not just have an edible hedge? You know, it will be something for us to eat, but it will also be good for the wildlife. Um, so it's a win-win situation, really. So yeah, that's what we've done just all along that edge. I think I'll just go through the edible hedging, which I got. Oh, there was so much. There was so much of it. <laughs> but um, they were bare roots, so they were only about two to three foot twigs, <laughs> which we just put in. So it's going to be a few years until they're all ready yet. Um, but basically, we've got some slowberry, elderflower, cherry plum, dog rose. So there's going to be a lot of rose hips, which is delicious. Uh, there's some hawthorn, there's some crab apples, and then there's a new one to me which is called Enelantia. I'll pop it up on the screen because I don't know if I pronounced it right um, but I believe that's a berry um, and it just sounded really nice the way they described it on the website so I thought we'd put some of them in as well. Um, yeah that's it. There's actually 30 elderflower which is a lot but I do love elderflower and I like making the cordial and the champagne so yeah a good few years until that hedge is ready to harvest from but um really excited about it and they're starting to show signs of life as well so it's all good um so there's going to be the main gate to the orchard here which will be quite a big gate there's also going to be a sort of secret gate well it's not it's not secret but it's just like a little sneaky gate here um so you know if you were in the kitchen garden you can just pop through there without having to go up there which isn't a problem but i just thought it'd be quite nice to have a little gate there so here there's going to be a polytunnel, which is about 30 foot by 13 foot, I believe. And then there's going to be a little fruit bed next to it, that side, which we have started. Well, we planted it all up, actually, because when we got the apple trees, we also got the bare root fruit bushes as well. Um, literally just dug trenches for the raspberries and, you know, holes for the fruit bushes it's still turfed but we're obviously going to take the turf off and probably like you know mulch it with some bark or something and hopefully put a cage over it at one point as well to stop the birds getting them but in the fruit cage we have got two rows of raspberries autumn bliss aha yes two rows of raspberries autumn bliss um i grew them back in hampshire on the allotment i loved them really really delicious I think they're about three meters the the rows so yeah three meters by two of the raspberries there's two hinon maki green gooseberries and then there's four black currants there's two ben lomond and two ben elder not a lot of fruit but more than enough for us um I'll probably just make jam and things with the black currants and the gooseberries um, and hopefully with the raspberries i've never had enough raspberries from the allotment to make jam with because I always used to just eat them <laughs> so it'd be quite nice to make some jam with them um there's going to be like a little hedge running around the whole plot um not I mean not big but just a little hedge mainly to keep the dogs out because my parents got a new dog called Alfie who's a fox red lab and he digs everything so yes yeah, mainly to keep them out the main gate will be here but there'll also be a gate into the allotment patch here as well um, which is more ideal for the house if you just wanted to you know come out the house and, and sneak in and, and grab some veg you can just do that there without walking around there um, there's going to be a rose bed here we haven't dug that area yet so all the roses which I've purchased and bought with me are in this bed here at the moment <laughs> um, which is fine I mean we can you know we can plant them in there at a later date when it has been planted, I did go a bit mad and buy quite a lot of roses from David Austin. Um, but yeah, they're, they're all in there at the moment. But yeah, it's just going to be full of flowers, which will be nice and sunflowers and foxgloves and yeah, just really nice. So that would be a nice little way into the, um, into the main working veg patch area. Um, so here... Uh, there is an old pigsty here, 
which we're not actually getting rid of. We're keeping it, I don't know why, um, but we can use it as storage. So when you come into the allotment here, we're gonna have some fence panels just to block off the compost bin area. Just cause it's not a very pretty sight, is it? But um, I just, yeah, I just think it will look nicer with some fence panels there. So you can come in here, go round and go into this area here where we'll have free compost bins. Um, you can go around the back and, you know, store your wheelbarrows and things around there. I did draw a little wheelbarrow as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's just going to be a little compost area there. Uh, there's sort of like a lean-to garage here uh, for our cars. Um, and then you've got the vegetable garden, which again has a little hedge around it. There's going to be four main vegetable beds. Um, one whole bed is going to be potatoes. So there'll be potatoes, uh, roots, legumes and brassicas. But what we're going to do is along this edge, we're going to have a row of asparagus. There's going to be rhubarb along here. Um, and then there's going to be a lavender hedge along this edge. So when you look out at the potting shed and the greenhouse, you've got a nice lavender hedge along this side here. Um, there's going to be a little pergola in the centre. Um, yeah, no, a pergola. I think my dad's going to build a pergola. Um, it's either that or having like four archways. But I think a pergola will be nice and that will be covered in climbing roses one day. <laughs> hopefully someday soon uh, yeah climbing roses which I just think will be really nice as well you know just to walk through and get the nice scent all the sweet smelling scent of roses um, and yeah there'll be some of our wigwams which we sell um, dotted around sweet corn peas lots of peas um, courgettes broad beans bolotti beans runner beans all your sort of brassicas your swiss chard uh, carrots and all that sort of thing um, and then I'll probably do what I did back on the allotment and plant some rows of flowers in amongst the vegetable as well oh not forgetting munchkin pumpkins as well definitely need to grow them so yeah the four main vegetable beds they are how big are they are they about they're about 8.5 meters by 6.5 meters big so yeah quite big a lot a lot of veg but we recently just bought a chest freezer as well so we're prepared for lots of harvests <laughs> there's going to be three raised beds here um, and i'm going to purchase the oak sleepers actually over the next couple of days because we can put them in now we can put them in and get the topsoil and get them sorted now um, but these two here are two meter by two meter each and then this one here is two meters by five meters this one's going to be my cut flower bed. So there's going to be gladioli and dahlias and I'm not sure what else, but I will think of something else to go in there for sure. Um, I've purchased my gladioli bulbs and I think about seven dahlias at the moment. There's actually plans to put 25 dahlias in there, but I didn't want to fork out for 25 dahlias to start with. So I've gone for seven at the moment. Um, and yeah, just, just see how we get on, maybe take some root cuttings and things and just pick up some along my travels. So yeah, three raised beds. Um, I think I'm quite tempted to put strawberries in one of these, but these will have um, our small wigwams in the middle with sweet peas growing up them. And then yeah, probably strawberries around one and maybe some flowers around the other. I'm not too sure yet. Um, and then this will be paved, this area. And we're hoping to have a lovely greenhouse one day um, when we save up a little bit of money. <laughs> the money seems to be disappearing quite quickly once you move house and you've got lots of projects to do. Um, but yeah, hopefully one day we'll have a nice greenhouse here um, and then the potting shed here, um, which I was going to purchase. I was going to purchase a potting shed that my dad has sort of put his foot down and said that he's going to make one um which is quite exciting because obviously you can make it quite quirky then can't you so yeah it's quite exciting uh, the greenhouse is going to be about 24 foot by 12 foot in size and the potting shed is 8 foot by 16 foot 
so quite big I mean my last shed the little purple shed was six foot by four foot so quite a lot bigger um, I'll go through the potting shed plans in a minute because I have drawn up a few little ideas of how I want it to look because um, I I love I, well, I loved my little shed so no doubt I will love this shed as well um, and then maybe a little container in the middle there and maybe a little seating you know little table and chairs here so we can sit here and just look out um, yeah the idea is to have se little seating areas you know dotted around and there's a bench there um, just because it would be nice to make a cup of tea and you know just go and sit and enjoy the view that's the idea anyway um, what was I going to say then? Oh, the overall size of this part, the kitchen garden area. So this part, the actual size of that is 32 metres by 20 metres. So again, you know, a nice size. I think my allotment was 14 metres by seven meters so yeah 30 32 meters by 20 meters is is quite an upgrade um but a lot a lot of work so much work um yeah i think i might have just about covered it i mean this is basically the same but it's just got what we're going to be growing and what i might do is go through what we're going to grow and what's what varieties and all the seeds and all that sort of thing i might do in that in the next video because i've probably talked too long as it is so we've talked about kitchen garden we've done the orchard polytunnel fruit garden greenhouse chickens beekeeping edible hedge um yeah i think that's about it i think that's all you need to see and all you need to know i think i've covered everything so let's flip the camera back around so I feel like I've missed something about the plans, but what I have done is I've written a blog post which can be found over on the Orchard Garden Antiques website um, under the blog menu. Um, there's a blog on there all about the plans and you can see more detailed pictures um, and yeah, everything you need to know is there on the blog in case I have missed anything. Um, yeah, I just I feel like I've missed something. Um, but I think the last thing I'm going to talk about quickly is the potting shed, which, like I said, my dad is hoping to make. Um, I'm a bit nervous about it. Not nervous. I'm just, I'm not a very patient person. Um, and I quite, I'd quite like to have a potting shed quite quick. <laughs> and I know we're so busy at the moment, like I say, with the business and, and trying to sort of set everything up. Um, I know how busy my dad is and I just don't want to put that strain on him so um, yeah having him make the shed would be amazing but I just don't want to put any pressure on him at the moment so I have drawn up a few pictures which I will show you so like I said the potting shed is going to be um, about eight foot by 16 foot so quite a nice size um, but I want it to look a little bit quirky <laughs> and my dad wants it to sort of rest on um, like a little brick platform so um, I think that's why he wants to make it himself basically um, but yeah there's going to be a potting bench in there I'm going to have my little oven which I had in the purple shed that's going to be there as well my dad was like why, why don't you just go in the kitchen and make a cup of tea and then bring it outside and I was like no that's not the point <laughs> you have to make it in the potting shed brew it in the potting shed and then just sit there and admire your view you know without going inside and having to take your wellies off and things you cannot beat a cup of tea that has been brewed outside like I don't know why it just tastes so much better see I'm gonna have the little oven there um, so I can brew my tea there's going to be like a tool rack so all the tools will be on the wall we're going to have um, like a storage system where we can store the apples and pumpkins and things like that so there'll be a nice sort of apple rack along the back there'll be shelving um, there'll be oh actually I couldn't decide between having a little table where I can sort of uh, do like a little bit of floristry <laughs> um, or having an armchair 
quite like the idea of having an armchair because I can make the tea, sit in the armchair and just look out the window. Um, of course, there'll be a little dog bed in there as well for Teddy. So um, he likes being outside, but I mean, he's only two and a half, but he's, he is like a little old man. He, he does like his bit of comfort and he will only be out, you know, he'll follow me around, but you can tell that he really just wants to go and curl up in his bed. So yeah, it'd be nice to have a little bed for him in the potting shed. So when I am outside, he can just go and take himself away and have a little nap, which sounds really nice, actually. I'd love to have a dog's life. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. That's all we're going to sort of fit in there at the moment. Um, I say all, I mean, it's quite big. We are squeezing things in, but um, yeah, really excited about the potting shed. I know a lot of people ask about the colour. I would really, really love to have a purple one. But my dad said no, he doesn't want a purple one. But I, I am actually going down the route of having like a more rustic looking shed. Um, like before, it was quite girly, it was quite pretty, wasn't it? It was practical, but it was quite pretty. Um, but I quite, you know, I like the rustic sort of shabby country you know plain wood the potting bench can just you know just be plain and and rustic I keep saying rustic but I do I do like it um yeah just it's just simple and nice I like um Selena Lake does a really lovely book with some beautiful pictures of potting sheds inside, which I recommend. It's lovely just to flick through and look at. Um, but yeah, that's the sort of route that I'm going down. Um, still pretty, but just simple, you know, simple and rustic. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think, I think I've covered everything. I've shown you what the plans are anyway, um, given you a little bit of a tour and yeah, it feels good to be making videos again. It really, really does. Um, so yeah, hopefully I will film a new video quite soon. I'm actually currently just making up a spreadsheet of all the things that we're going to be growing. Um, so once that's done, and once we've ordered the seeds, I might do a video all about what we're going to be growing, like all the varieties and, and all the flowers that we're going to be growing. I think that would be quite interesting. Um, but yeah. I think that's about it for today. I'm going to go inside and have a cup of tea. I do love my tea. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. It feels so good to be back. Um, I really, really hope you liked that video and I will see you all again soon. Bye.